Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the back and doing some back work. I'll be showing you some new techniques on releasing the quadratus lumborum and we'll go into each muscle a little bit more. And I want to tell you that I like to start with a little bit of myofascial release and what that does is just starts warming up the muscles. So let's just jump right on in and remember that before you start your work and adding lotions and potions, you do myofascial release dry, with dry, no uh, oil or ointments yet. So one of the things that I like to do is cross my arms and I'm pushing away. I'm not pushing towards the table, but just kind of stretching the tissue right here. You may hold it for a few seconds. And what this does, is it really starts warming up the tissue so it can start relaxing the muscles. We have superficial fascia and deep fascia. And right now we're just addressing the superficial fascia. And the fascia, remember what it does, is it encases each and every muscle in our body. It's what holds it together. It's like a sock over your foot or the pillowcase over your pillow. So it holds it together and it also conforms to the shape of the muscle. And remember, if you, if you pull apart chicken, a raw piece of chicken, you'll be able to see that it's the raw egg white looking film over the muscle. What I'm doing here is separating. I'm going, pushing away from me and towards me, right? close to the spine, kind of trying to get the erector spinase, you know, to spread out a little bit. So you can do this just walking in one inch strips all the way up and not this fast because it really needs to be a little bit slower, but just for the sake of showing you, that's what I'm going to do here. I also like to do some skin rolling, which is really effective. And remember, it's done dry, no oils and potions yet, just kind of rolling down my thumbs down her back. And you can take this at one inch strips. You can just use your thumbs to guide you, but I'm really doing the rolling with my fingers. So this is what I'm doing. I'm walking up her back with my fingers. My thumbs are still in place. You can also do the C, do a C form with your thumbs. Just going in between. And that really loosens up the fascia. So you start warming up the muscles all the way down. So these are just some techniques that I like to start off with before I get into the a uh, little bit more detail. And if we didn't draw these muscles on here, you could see that her skin is really red now. So we've created vasodilation. And what, does, what that means is that we've opened up the blood flow to some of, maybe some of the areas here in the muscle that was lacking in blood flow. And the fascia constricts the muscle because it is like a casing. So it constricts the muscle and it prevents the blood from flowing freely through the muscle. And remember, that it, the, the muscle needs blood flow because that's what brings the nutrients to feed and nourish the muscles. So if the fascia is tight, you know, and it's encasing the muscle really tight, it's not letting the blood flow. And that's what ischemia is. Ischemia is the lack of blood flow to a muscle. So after you've done all the dry work, then you can start using your lotion. I like the Lacuna Botanicals, the deep tissue massage with CBD oil and it goes on really good. It glides perfect. I want to start today with the latissimus dorsi and the trapezius, which you can see right here, the trapezius. The origins, remember, are usually down the midline. And the thoracolumbar um, aponeurosis right here is what attaches to the lat. This is what this is right here. And remember, aponeurosis means flat sheet tendon. So it's a broad sheet tendon and it attaches to the lat. The lat is also known as the swimmer's muscle. You know, you can see the swimmers, they have very developed lats. It also makes the posterior part of the axilla. So this little part right here and this little part right here, the axilla, this is the lat. So when somebody swims a lot or they tell you, you know, it hurts right around here, it could be their lat. So you want to make sure and address the origins and the insertions on the humerus 
and you can see how far it covers kind of like the lower part of the scapula right here. So you want to do some broad strokes just to kind of warm it up. And I always tell you guys, tell my students to make sure you get the origin, belly, and insertion of the muscle. That's very important for you to be able to release, you know, everything that's going on with the lap. And another posture that you can do is also maybe even bring down their arm a little bit, either to the sides or all the way down. Okay, and always assist your client's arm when you're doing that. But I want it right here on the table right now so I can really address the lat. Like I mentioned, it's the posterior part of the axilla and you can really do one inch strips and just really work the lat and the insertion right here. We painted it for you so you can get an idea because it's kind of difficult sometimes to see it in a book or even if you color it, it's difficult to see. But from here, you can do some figure eights you can also do some uh, with your knuckles with a flat part of your muscle, kind of separating here, going cross fiber on the lat. Okay, so then you can go back to your effleurage. You can go to your petrissage. And remember that the type of work that I do and that maybe you want to you know, learn how to do too is very specific. It's not about how deep you go. I, I don't like that deep tissue word because it's really about how specific you are. If you find the correct trigger point or if you work the whole muscle, you don't even have to go that deep because you know that when you're hurting, if you find that right spot, you don't need a lot of pressure and you don't want to engage the nervous system because then that's even going to make it harder to relax because pain is a normal, natural, protective mechanism from the body. So if you're inflicting the more pain that the client needs, then that they automatically start tensing up. So you don't want to engage the nervous system. You don't want to take the pain level to more than what's comfortable for your client, which is usually between four, five. And I know you're going to get the clients that say, oh, no pain is no gain. And they are going to go ahead and want you to go deeper, but there's no need for that really. You can do, I like to do some cross across the low back because this really gets the origins right here. You can go all the way across and it feels really good. You can do go up the spine here to the origins of the uh, trapezius and the iliolumbar. You can go with your fingers. And also right here, you can really get the upper trap. If you guys can see, you can really just do the money sign and you can also do the C where you kind of put your thumb on top and then with this, these fingers, you're curling under, unrolling. You're really unrolling, unruffling the upper trapezius. If you can see that movement, this is all I'm doing. And this is a really good movement to get underneath the trapezius. The levator scapula, close here to the medial part of the scapula, you can get it while you're there already. Remember the origins? are on the cervicals, the origin of the levator is on the transverse processes of the cervicals. And you can get it right here just by, all I'm doing is pushing the scapula up just a little bit, not too much. And the origin of the trapezius is right here at the occipital. And then it goes, even inserts onto the clavicle, the third, the lateral third of the clavicle and all the way up to T12. So we drew it only on one side, but it really should be on both sides. And this is called the coat hangers muscle because it, it looks like when you hang up a shirt, like if you hang up a shirt and it looks like that. So that's why it's called the coat hangers muscle. And it goes from T12 all the way to the occipital ridge, but the origin is right here at the top. Remember origins are closer to the midline closest to the heart and you can feel the fibers if you need to ask your client <laughs> she said, sorry is that too deep I'm oh you're ticklish okay so the trapezius muscle right here is where most people feel pain you know when people feel their shoulders are hiking up because it does, you know, elevate. Of course, the levator also is the main elevator of the 
um, scapula. So most people feel the tension in their shoulder. So you really need to really get up here on the upper trap. And you can also do one inch strips right up to the occipital ridge and go medial and lateral one inch strips, go up and then go medial and lateral and just really try to get all the way across right here. So if people are carrying the world on their shoulders, you most people, you've got to really address these muscles right here, the upper trapezius, the rhomboids, the levator. You can also use your knuckles. I use my knuckles a lot since, you know, my fingers after so many years of using them, they've, and you don't want to abuse your thumbs. So you can use your knuckles, you can go over around the medial part of the scapula and you can even go all the way down with your knuckles or all the way up just stay off the spinous processes this is what we call the iron i'm ironing her back and you can go back to your effleurage and your petrissage just to let your client know that they can relax a little bit you know these are strokes that even though they're not specific they're the basics and you can't forget about the basics i i can also do some with my forearms you know just a little bit of stretching separating And this is really good, like a myofascial, you know, technique that you can release some of the muscles here on the back. So for the latissimus dorsi and the upper trapezius, you can do some very specific work and they'll really help your clients if they have problems with their shoulders, tension in their shoulders, or even down the side of the, uh, the thorax right here. So this technique should really help you to help relieve some of that pain. And also, we didn't draw the rotator cuff muscles for you because we uh, did a video previously on that where you have the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and then the subscapulars on the anterior part of the scapula. So if you want to find out more about the rotator cuff muscles, check out that video. So now on this side, we're going to be talking about the quadratus lumborum, the erector spinae, and the rhomboids. We threw these three on this side and the two on this side. Remember that muscles come in layers. So there's like six layers and we can't draw them all in at once because it would be just be too big of a mess. So I just wanna address these specific muscles today. And I might mention the other ones, but I, I won't be able to show you some specific work. So we start with the origin of the quadratus lumborum here at the ilium. And then you find the last, the floating rib. The last floating rib, which is about right there, and that's the insertion and then on the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae. And the reason it's called quadratus is because it looks like, uh, like a quad. It's attached at four sides and it's at the lumbar area. So one of the things that you can do to address it, obviously you warm it up. And I've already done the skin rolling on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of effleurage. And the quadratus lumborum is known as the hip hiker because it kind of hop hikes your hip. So this one, you want to find the soft part of the muscle. You've got to be careful not to go in to the ribs. Do not, you know, press hard on the ribs, especially the floating ribs on people that are elderly. They might have, you know, osteoporosis and they can break easily. So you want to find this little dip because she's a small person. It's about an inch and you gotta find, you go to the medial part, right by the spine and you dip down where you feel it dipping down. That's where the muscle is. I don't feel bone underneath my fingers. Here's the ilium, the origin, and here's the floating rib. So you wanna go to like right here, to the belly of the muscle to really get to that. If you wanna work the insertions, you want to make sure and use your fingers because you have more control and you're not going as deep. And you don't want to break any of the bones right here, any of the floating ribs. And if you want to get to the uh, transverse processes where it inserts on the lumbars one, two, three, and four right here, you just kind of go with your fingers and you can do like circles too. I use this one a lot for the erectors. 
I'm going right alongside the spine and just doing little circles, clockwise circles, really getting the multifidae underneath and the rotators and the iliocostalis and the longissimus, all the way up. I also have tools that I work for people that are bigger and it's harder to get into. So I don't start pressing until I feel it dip it down and then I just push in there a little bit with my tool. And you can address the origin also with a tool. Uh, most people have pain right here. If they sit down a lot, this is also used, you know, when you bend over, when you're sitting down, it gets tight and a lot of people have pain here and they might think it's the psoas, well, the clients don't think it's the psoas. They don't come in and tell you, oh, my psoas hurts or my upper trapezius hurts. That's where you investigate and that's where you have to figure out what muscle is it and where the trigger points are and where they're hurting. Because a lot of times they may think it's the trapezius because they have pain you know, between their shoulder blades and it might really be the rhomboids. The rhomboids are really tight. The trapezius is more superficial to the rhomboids and the erectors is more, it's deeper to the rhomboids. So they're in layers. So it would be the erectors, the rhomboids, and then the trapezius on top. And now I'm gonna use the bevel bar to go in between the vertebrae and go down and it goes in between the lamina groove. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a swooping motion. You know, I'm swooping out, trying to get a little bit of separation there of the spinalis and they're trying to get to the rotators and the multifidi muscles that are underneath. And you don't wanna go above C7, just up to about C7 right there. You don't wanna go any higher than that. So the spinalis, the longissimus, and the iliocostalis on the costals, they insert on the, on the ribs. And that's what these little things right here, that's the insertions that goes all the way up. And we drew it underneath, we skipped it here. It does go all the way up, up here. However, we drew the rhomboid on top, so we kind of didn't draw it here, but it is underneath, beneath. It's the deeper layer underneath the rhomboids. So you can do, for this one, you really want to be able to uh, do some nice, deep effleurage, some petrissage. You can even do some cross fiber with a skin rolling. I already have oil on her and lotion on her, I'm sorry. You can do with your fingers getting real close to the spinous processes, but not on top of the spinous processes. You can do effleurage with your fingertips all the way up. Move out an inch and go again all the way up so you can get the longissimus and the iliocostalis, another inch out. I'm also getting the rhomboids even right here. So a lot of times you have clients that come in and they have you know pain in the back and it starts here and then it goes all the way up and now you, you can understand why it follows the route of the muscle. You know, So you wanna be able to address from origin to insertion, origin belly to insertion on, on almost all the muscles when you're trying to treat you know, trigger points or anything that's affecting them. And a lot of times trigger points are somewhere else that are a little bit more distal. So you wanna make sure and get everything from origin to insertion. And you can also go cross fiber. I like to use my forearm a lot and I can go down. And make sure that you're watching your body mechanics. I'm really using my legs. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I try not to just use my forearm because eventually this is gonna hurt my shoulder. So I try to just, you know, hold on on this side and just push with my legs as far as I can. I'm actually quite short, I'm only 4'11". So I might have to do this on longer people, taller people in two strides. I might do the upper part first and then I might step down and you know, and lower and then go down here. But you wanna make sure that you get all the muscles here of the back and you're going through all the layers. 
And now let's talk about the rhomboids. The rhomboids are two muscles. You can see the, the, the rhomboids minor. It's right here from C7 to T1. And then from T2 to T5 is the rhomboids major. And it, it kind of faded. I do apologize for that. It kind of faded. We're still playing with the paints and they don't always come out. So most of us know that client that comes in that they have shoulder pain. Shoulder pain. <laughs> shoulder pain. <laughs> most of us have that client that comes in with pain between their shoulders. Most of them are people that sit in front of a desk all day and don't get up and stretch. You know, their, their shoulders are hunched forward. So the rhomboids are being hyperextended. So you really want to address from the rhomboid minor to the rhomboid major and get right here on the medial part of the scapula because they insert right underneath and that's where you put the bolster and really get underneath here to get the origins and the insertions and work those rhomboids out because most of them have a trigger point like right around there in the middle of the rhomboid major. That's where most people have a trigger point. And this is from sitting down too long and having their shoulders forward. So I recommend for my clients to get up and stretch at least once an hour or even get up to a door frame and put their arm out and just turn their torso, leaving their arms straight against the doorway. That's a really good stretch for this area and it helps relieve some of that tension from the rhomboids. This is another good one. I think all of us know this one too, where they can stretch. So teach them some stretches. You know, they're, it's just as important what they do when they're not coming to see you as what you do when they are in, on your table. They have to continue. They have to take care of their body and they have to continue being proactive in taking care of themselves and stretching. This, I have a little pillow here that I can put underneath her shoulder blade. I don't really, there's a lot of clients that cannot put their arm on the back and that's really not a good idea. I, I don't, I prefer not to do that. I prefer to just bend it here, their arm a little bit and put a little pillow or a rolled up towel, put it underneath her shoulder. And this really opens up the shoulder blade right here, the uh, scapula. And what I do is I lift up here at the elbow, put my hand underneath right around where, like where the coracoid process is and I can pull out the scapula out. She's got nice and loose scapula and if I've already warmed it up, I can really get underneath here where the rhomboids uh, insert right here on the medial part underneath the scapula and I can really get underneath and even once it's nice and loose, I can retract it a little bit. And I'm not just getting the uh, rhomboids, but I'm also getting, you know, part of the trapezius right there. And just really work those trapezius because a lot of people have trigger points right here. I've got my tool. This is one of the major trigger points right here on people. And you can use your tool to go back and forth or stay on it and do a little bit of pressure. On trigger points, you can count up to 20, but no more than 20. You might want to come back another time, go somewhere else and come back. You don't want to overload and stimulate the uh, nervous system for too long. And remember to stay within five or six. Don't go too deep. It's not about how much pain they can take. It's about how specific you are. If you can get, get it and be very specific and work it up to 20 seconds and then come back to it later if it hasn't released. So once you've turned your client on the sideline position, make sure their upper leg is supported with a pillow and a bolster underneath their head. Make sure that their cervicals are straight from C1 to C7, from T1 to T12, and then from uh, L1 to L5. So make sure that it's a straight line. The sideline position is really a good way to get to the QL, the quadratus lumborum, because if you can see, like, make sure you feel where the ilium is, right there, and then her floating rib is where it inserts. So you want to go, like, down, pushing towards the table with your thumb or with a tool, but make sure that you're in the soft part right here and really try to get that belly of that muscle, and I can feel where I'm rolling over it. Don't push too, too hard and make sure that you're not on that floating rib. You're in the middle 
of the QL right there getting to the belly of it. And you can even squeeze it with both your thumbs or your fingers if you can't use your thumbs. Almost like you're squeezing a pimple right there. So this is a good way to get to the uh, hip hiker. And, and you can also get the iliac crest really good right here from the sideline position. You can really go down the iliac crest and get all those origins that feel tight. A lot of people have pain right here at the origin of the QL and the uh, latissimus also. And for another video on the deep hip rotators, there's another video that we made to show you the deep hip rotators and the glutes, which also have, you know, uh, insertions or along here. So you want to make sure and tune in for that video. You can apply your lotion to go up the uh, erector spinase. You can really get the erector spinase from here. And the latissimus also. I know it's not drawn on this side. It's on this side drawn. But from here you can really get the latissimus dorsi. Remember that it's the, uh, the back posterior axilla. And you can lift it if people have problems with their latissimus. And you can also ask her to hold her arm up right here. And you've got the sheet covering her and you can really lift up the lat right here and you can get to the um, even the serratus anterior the serratus anterior is the boxer's muscle that helps you deliver a punch and it's right along here so it originates on ribs one through eight so you want to make sure and from the sideline position, you can really access the serratus anterior muscle. And the lat right here, you can massage it going down one inch strips. All the way down. And when she puts her arm down, you can make sure her arm holds the sheet. You can go back to doing effleurage. You can use your knuckles. You can do figure eights. And now we can get to the rhomboids. The rhomboids, you just kind of push back a little bit here and have her scapula pop out. And with your fingers or even with your knuckles, you can go right around the medial part of the scapula to really get, like if you find a trigger point, then you can hold it there for a minute. And all I'm doing is just harnessing her shoulder just a little bit to give me some support and to stabilize remember you always want to stabilize the shoulder joint which is what the sits tendons do that's what the rotator cuff muscles do they stabilize the shoulder girdle you can go one inch strips again and get the occipital ridge right where the uh uh, upper trapezius originates and the levator scapula you can get close to the spinous processes you can do a little bit of kneading right here the upper trap and also while you're here you might as well get the supraspinatus you know we've got the supraspinatus here and you've got the rhomboids right here you can get them on both sides but i like to turn them both ways so i do one side first and then the other side and then you can really get right here to the spinalis again the longissimus an inch out and about two inches out you'll see the uh, ilicostalis and you can get to the insertions of the ilicostalis right on each rib you can go up and get right in between the ribs to get to the ilicostalis costalis insertions so this work is very very important you know really uh, really t targeting very specific the quadratus lumborum the erector spinase going up the lamina groove and the rhomboids right here and the upper trapezius and the lat all of this is just a perfect way to really expose them and go a little bit more detail 
which is what I like to do. I like to call it detail work and specific work. You know, um, it's not about how deep you go. It's not about how much pain. It's just about being specific with your client. Make sure that you do your nerve ending strokes at the end, help your client relax. So make sure that you reach closer with your client. Stay tuned for our next video, subscribe to my channel and give us a like. Follow me on Instagram for AMP reviews and check out my website for any classes or products that you might want. All the links are below. Till the next time, create a good day.